Hello and welcome back. My name is Trishra Jagtiani and today I'll take you through the important command in Excel which is the data validation. Data validation is a feature in Excel used to control what a user can enter into a cell to make sure all data entries are accurate and consistent. So you can use data validation to restrict the user to enter the numbers say between 0 to 10 or if you want to make sure they only enter dates occurring in the next 30 days or only allow them to enter text less than 25 characters. Data validation can also be used to create a drop down list of items in a cell to select from so that the user is restricted to only pick up the data from the list or the drop down list. We will start by creating a simple drop down list using the data validation command. So, to do that, I will select the cell where I want the drop down list. In my example, I will select the cell just below the fruits heading. Once I do that, I will need the drop down menu from this left hand side data which I have available. So I'm going to go on to the data validation command which sits under the data tools group in the data tab and ribbon. So once I click on the data validation, the data validation window opens up. Under settings, in the allow screen, I'm going to select list and in source, I will select the source where this fruit names will come from. So my source is from A2 to A9. Once done, I'll click on OK. A simple drop down list will be available here. If I now try to put any other information other than what is available in this drop down list, it will automatically throw an error. Now, this error which is given here is the default error which is there in the data validation command, but you can also customize it as per your requirement. So, if I click on the data validation tab again, you will see there is an option to add a error alert. If I click on that tab, there will be a style option and then a title and an error message. If I keep the style as top, Excel will not allow the user to enter any other information other than what is there in the drop down list. However, there are two more information here under style. One is the warning and another one is the information. In both the cases, Excel will allow the user to enter other information other than what is there in the list. However, in both the cases, it will just throw a warning to the user. Now, I will decide to keep it as top and enter a error message, customized error message. So I'll put a title as error and under customization, I'll put the message as please enter the data from drop down list and click on OK. Once I do that, now if I enter any other information which is not there in the drop down list, it will give me this error, same window, but the error message is customized now similarly if i go back and not using the stop i use warning this time and click on ok and try to enter the information again it will now ask me do you want to continue with your current information if i say no it will go back and ask me to enter the information again if i say yes it will take the data and go to the next cell same thing it also works with the information again it will only give me the information about that this is not the correct data and but let me enter it if i click on okay so let me enter the data again it will give me the error but if i click on okay it will accept the data that i have entered and will go to the next cell so this is how your three uh, styles on the error alert window works also you would see another window or tab which is called as the input message this is used to enter an information to the user so if you want to tell the user or give more information to the user you can enter that detail into this tab so if i want to say fruits name and i want to tell the user that please only enter tropical fruits name so i will put the information here Please enter tropical fruits names only. I'll stop and I click on OK. Now, if I go to that cell where I need to enter the information, you will see that it is automatically pop up that message for me. Now, I had entered the information in the next cell, so it is showing me there. But if I will, if I create the information here also, 
it will show me in all the windows where I have entered this data. Please enter tropical fruit names only. Stop enter. Sorry, okay. And here, when I click on keep the cursor here, it automatically gives me this information. So this is this will be very useful for the users to see what they need to enter here. Now, this is how your simple data validation works in Excel. Congratulations on completing the business dashboard using Excel course. Ready to elevate your career? Join our postgraduate certificate in data science and AI and gain exclusive benefits like a complimentary Python programming bootcamp, 7 plus case studies, dedicated student support and access to our job opportunities portal. Don't miss out on this chance to transform your career. Invest in yourself today and join our program. Click on the link in the description to enroll now and take the next step in your career journey moving on to see a little advanced version in excel if you decide to create a form and you have already created a small template to create a form where you want to take a feedback from the employees for the trainings that they have gone through so now in that data or the template you're going to ask for their employee id their gender the feedback will be given from 1 to 10. That means that if they have really liked the training program, they will give the 10 as a feedback, which is very good. But if they did not like the training at all or it was not relevant, they will give the feedback as 1, which is very poor. So this is what our requirement is. And the date of the training. Now, date of the training should be within the last 30 days so that you have to restrict them to only enter the information for the past 30 days training that they have gone through. So the first and the foremost, I would want them to enter the employee ID, but the employee ID will be from the list that I give them. So I'll select all the cells where I want their information and click on data validation. In the settings, again, I'll select list. However, this time the source will be, will be from a different sheet so i'll select the sheet where i want to source from which is the database sheet and select the employee code from here and click on okay as soon as i do that i'll see that all cells will now have that drop down list under gender i will again select all the cells where i want the result click on this data validation tab under list this time i will not give the source of any cell range i will enter the information here separated by a comma so male female and click on ok you will automatically see that the list is shown here similarly now i want in the feedback i want the employees to only enter numbers between 1 to 10 so like i have mentioned earlier if they really like the, if they think that the feedback was very very good they will put the 10 as the result. If they find the feedback as very poor, they will put 1 as the result. So then in that case, I'll have to restrict them to do that. To do that, again, I'll select the, all the cells where I want them to enter the information. Click on the data validation. This time, I will enter whole number so that they can only enter the whole number between 1 to 10. So I will say between 1 and maximum. 10 so they can only give this information here nothing else other than that so if i try to enter 11 as a data it will automatically give me an error so i'm restricting them to enter only information from 1 to 10. now date of the training like i said it has to be between the past 30 days it cannot be before that or later than that so then again i can select the date and give them any date which is not less than a particular date. So I decide them to give the last 30 days any date which is not less than 30 days. So I will say 12th of August and give that as a date to be entered in the end date column. So like I said, I want to enter last 30 days. So instead of, sorry, I, I mentioned less than, it would actually be greater than. So I have to tell Excel that any date that is past a particular date, only that should be picked up. So I'm going to say 12th of 
August. So I'll say greater than 12th of August 2019. So they can only pick date after 12th of August 2019. So they cannot pick date before that. It, you can also pick greater than or equal to because then you are allowing them to also use 12th of August as a date. Once I do that, I click on OK. Here, if I now try to enter any date which is prior to 12th August, it will give me an error. So here we go. But if I try to enter 12th August, like I said, because we have create, picked up greater than or equal to, it will not give me an error. It will accept that. Here we go. If I put any other date between after those dates, it will definitely work. Similarly, you can also use the between date option here. Not only this, you can always say between this date to this date, which will restrict the user to only use the dates between the two. So I'll say 12th September as the end date, 2019. So your start date is 12th August and your end date is 12th September 2019. You can also enter it in DDMMYY or you can enter it in DBMMMYYYY. And once I click on OK, now if I give any other date other than this 13 September 2019 and click on OK, it will give me an error because I'm only supposed to give the date till 12th of September 2019. So this is how you can restrict the user to enter the information only from the drop down list or from the date that you have mentioned in the data validation or even any number that you want to give which is a whole number between the two numbers that you have listed there. And there is also one more option which you can always use in the data validation, which is the text length. Now, text length, why do we restrict this? Because you want a feedback from the user, but that feedback should not exceed, say, 25 characters. So if you want to do that, you can always go to the cell where you want the feedback. So I say I'm giving a heading as feedback of free text. So they have to give a feedback as a free text. They have to mention what they liked in the training or what they did not like in the training. For doing that, we are restricting them to only enter any 25 characters. So I select text length and then equal to I give the length as 25, let's say, and click on OK. If I try to enter any other information more than 25, it will not let me do. Yeah, here it gives me an error because I'm only allowing them to enter tw till 25 characters. If it is more than 25 characters, it will automatically give an error. So this is how your data validation tool works in Excel. This is a very useful tool. You can also do more with data validation like using a range or naming a range and then working on the data validation, which will help you further to do the advanced validation, which we'll learn in the next video. Thank you for watching this one and keep watching for more.